Hello everyone, this week we have on Josh and Alicia Rogers. They are two amazing parents uh, who are currently full-time homeschooling for kids. And uh, we kind of beat that subject to death and then we pretended that we were gonna stop talking about it and then talked about it more. And uh, like most things in the podcast, it was for selfish reasons because we're pondering the, the, the homeschool route. Um, so it was a wonderful chat and we look forward to seeing what you guys think. Enjoy. Uh, who are you? Uh, <laughs> uh, who are we sitting down with? And, and why don't you say your name? And uh, Josh Rogers. Alicia Rogers. Mm-hmm. And you guys have 27 children. Uh, give 20, or take. Yeah. Give, yes. like, give or take. Uh, <laughs> yeah. no, how many do you actually have? Four. Four. And uh, sexes, ages? We have Ben, who is 14, and Nolan, who's 12, Charlotte, who will be nine next month, so she's eight, but she'll be nine, and Clara, who's four. Nice. Yeah. And then so when's number five coming along? Like we were talking about that, no? Mm-hmm. No, five and six, seven? I, I would eight? have liked to have five. Yeah. Really? But Are you a big fam- from a big family? No. I'm just from two, oh. and we're six years apart. Oh, wow. Yeah. She loves her babies. I love babies. <laughs> Is the babe the babies? You love the babies? I really love the babies. Mm. Your babies are all babies. Most babies. Yeah. Mm. Mostly my babies, but I do love other. Like, I love my nieces and babies. You know, nephews mm-hmm. and stuff. She's like the baby whisperer. Aww. We haven't done that thing where we ask them to um, explain what they do or who they are to a kid. Oh, sure, we can do that. Mm. Uh, I don't know which ones you've listened to. We had a question we used to start with, be like, Mm -hmm. so why don't you say if you were in a group of kids, like you were doing show and tell at your kid's school, and it came to you, and you're supposed Mm -hmm. to say who you are and what you do. Uh, what is it you say to the group of kids? So how do you how do you break that down into kids speak or whatever? Um, hey kids, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name's Josh. <laughs> I am Ben or Nolan's or Charlotte's or Clara's dad, <laughs> and uh, we live nearby in Ben Lomond, and we own a company called RPM Training, and it's a CrossFit gym as well as a product company where we make jump ropes. As well as sweet sweat. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, okay, so I'm Alicia, and I'm a homeschooling mom of four. Nice. Yes, I don't know. Yeah. I That's think great. it'd yeah. be the same be for kids it's and adults. More than enough. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if there's any other way to break it down. No. Yeah. <laughs> so. So when you f- had your first kid, were you like, "That's it, we're homeschooling"? Or was was homeschooling no. something that was like came about it, as a product of? Yeah, well, it definitely came about. I first of all, I never imagined I would be a homeschooling mom of four kids. Yeah, definitely not. What's never. your background in? Are you teacher? Or? Um, a little. My degree was in journalism and political science, and then I tutored kids with learning differences and learning disabilities right. for a number of years. I worked in corporate for a little bit, but gotcha. it was pretty short. So you have so, a bit a of a little, background a bit in of tutoring background. and the teaching, yeah, yeah. and. Um, so the two oldest and Charlotte, they all went to preschool, and then we used to live over the hill in Campbell. I'm so sorry. No. And we're okay uh, now. We're, we're, okay. <laughs> we're okay. We're okay now. We moved. We moved halfway through. <laughs> yes. And um, I sent them to this charter school, and it was supposed to be one of the best. And I just kind of kept feeling empty and like this wasn't right. But the thought of homeschooling seemed really overwhelming to take that. And be responsible for all of that. And you had what, how many at the time? Three. Oh. Mm-hmm. When we, when I started thinking about it, yeah. Yeah. what didn't feel right? Um. Well, I guess I felt like I got them up in the morning. Mm-hmm. I rushed out the door to spend the day with somebody else. Then I picked them up. We rushed to piano lessons. We rushed to jujitsu. We rushed to little league. And then we rushed home. We ate dinner. I helped with homework, and they went to bed. And I got them ready to spend the day with somebody else. And that's kind of where I just felt mm-hmm. like it wasn't working for yeah, our and family. We had, to, we had to come to terms with even the idea of homeschooling, too, because it wasn't – nowadays, there's so many more resources, and it's mm-hmm. so much more common. When we were growing up in the 80s, you know, it was mm-hmm. completely different. I mean, we had people. Like, exactly. It was either <laughs> yeah. the, the it was. Christian right or right. the yeah. off-the-grid left. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. 
Totally. So. so that was like, you first have to kind of overcome that. And then I think by, you know, whatever standard you're measuring, the school that we had them in was like one of the best schools. And they had some amazing teachers too. Yeah. yeah you know? and they, actually, we didn't have many problems at all with the teachers. Mm-hmm. They were great. But I think in some ways their hands were just tied, you know? And yeah. so we're like, well, this is, we literally have them in one of the best schools, you know, and this is just not feeling right to us. Um, we also have, our children have different sort of strengths and weaknesses as all, all people do. But um, like Ben, our oldest, probably would have just, you know, worked the system, gone through just fine. You know, whether we're homeschooling him, putting him in public school, private school, boarding school, it probably wouldn't yeah. have mattered. Right. You know, he would have just like found he his best right route. Out. Yeah. You know, and then Nolan, it was just, it's just not as, um, not as easy for him mm-hmm. to kind of, um, you know, rise above some certain situations. And when, when and, you say they're different, sorry to interrupt, do you mean like socially or like their learning style or all of it? I think all of it yeah. to some degree. To some degree. But um, both of them are fully capable. Nolan was fully capable, right. but. They both enjoyed um, school. And they didn't, yeah, and there wasn't a big sort of pushback from them necessarily um but like nolan is like a behavioral sponge you know and so he would be a completely different person in the during the summertime as compared to during the school year and it's like and it's like i don't even recognize you and you've been back to school for three days like what is What's going on? I like what, how you said, what did you call him? Behavioral, behavioral sponge. sponge. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, cause I've been using the term, um, folks is like really peer oriented, mm-hmm. but I like totally. the word I mean, yeah, too. it just, <laughs> cause that's exactly what it Very is. Very graphic totally. behavioral sponge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it makes, he it just makes sense. Up. Oh yeah. Yeah. Cause he, Oaks is the same. Yeah. Whoever he's around, he just, he like morphs into. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it would take like a week to detox after yeah, school. Yeah, he would have to detox. And then yeah. you would be like, oh. Hey, what's you, up, Nolan? Okay. Like, yeah. For a few months, and then all of a sudden, like, two days back in school. Good right. to talk to you. Oh, what's going on? Right. Yeah, and your friends must be a bunch of dickheads. Because uh, <laughs> you come home as a dickhead. <laughs> yeah, when we went on our trip, it, it took, like, maybe a week. And, yeah, Oaks was back to his normal self. Yeah. But, and that was, you know, our big reason for, like, wanting to homeschool, too. Exactly the same mm-hmm. thing you'd had. Just the school's amazing. But yeah. Just that feeling of just, like, sending him off at the age of five. Mm-hmm. You know, most days of the week, just just the, the thing is that I feel right. I I feel like there's a certain sense of control that sh- that that could be misinterpreted here. So like mm-hmm. when I when I think about it, I don't want to control how he is. No, I just want to put him in a situation where he can express himself without having to use somebody else's mannerisms. Right. Right. Exactly. And I I think that that's that's the difference of like. In a school system, you it's it's a gamble. Like, are mm-hmm. they surrounded by people who have good patterns, mm-hmm. or are they surrounded by people who have crappy patterns? And exactly. uh, and that know. was actually true. Ben had like some really nice kids in his class, yeah. and yeah. no one had almost no one to connect with right. that was you know like yeah. like minded. You know, right. kind of like. And that's the thing. No matter what school you send them to, it's kind of a, a gamble. Mm-hmm. Like, it's a gamble. You know, we were sending them to like yeah. It's private, expensive school, but mm-hmm. it, it doesn't matter no. how much you're paying. Like, no, yeah, totally. the public school down the road could have a, you know, a class of perfect angels who the kids right. connect with. Absolutely. Exactly. Well, even, you know, we homeschool, um, even moving to Santa Cruz, you know, there's some heat that the Santa Cruz public schools take, you know, but when we moved here and we started meeting kids that go to the Santa Cruz public schools, I'm like, I wouldn't be any more afraid to send them to school here than I was you know, in Campbell. So right. it, it's just, I think it's, uh, we just happened to get him in a really good charter school. That's cool. Yeah. It's, it's kind of interesting. It, it seems like the, from my outside perspective, looking in, like, it seems like a lot of the negative patterns are patterns centered around neglect, like mm-hmm. like kids who don't get the, the same kind of attention that maybe someone who is homeschooled or has a job that allows them to be more time, right. spend more time with them. And it's like, they would bring that into the, the relationship with my son and then my right. son would build that pattern and I'm like, hey, right. wait a second. <laughs> yeah. like, I specifically don't neglect you so that, 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 that won't be the case, right. you know? And I don't know. I don't know if it's just overly harsh because we're in such a unique, amazing scenario to constantly pay attention to our kids. I think so, but it wasn't always like that. You know, mm-hmm. when before we went away on our trip, 
we were kind of like where you were at before you homeschooled, like, I don't think we, we can homeschool, you know, that was, that was never really on the, the agenda right. for us. And yeah. then we spent five months with each other in each other's pockets and we were like, oh yeah, yeah, I can spend this much time with my kids. It's not easy, but no. I think the benefits for us and like, yeah, Pat was saying, like we have that ability to. Right. So Totally. You know, and we always say it's like <laughs> part of the reason that we homeschool is because we can, right? Not right. everybody can and that's totally understandable. Um, but yeah, so I, I yeah. think it was also coming down to we, we didn't want to pull the kids out of school against their will either. And so mm-hmm. because especially Ben and Nolan went to school until they were fourth and second grade. So we really, we actually floated the idea for a year and a half or so, right? Right. And we just, we wanted them you know, to say, yes, like, we want to do this too. Not that you can always leave those kinds of decisions up to your kids, but um, we we were, you know. I didn't want it to be a negative thing, like, you ripped me out of school. Right, and you resent it. That's it. (laughs) I'm going to be a terrible for the rest of my life. (laughs) Exactly. Um, Okay, and so do they, because in Santa Cruz, there's so many different options for homeschooling, Mm -hmm. and um, Josh and I were talking about it a little bit today, but do they all do Ocean Grove or... We just started Ocean okay. Grove. So and do you the, want to just explain exactly what that is for people who don't know? So Ocean Grove is a charter school. So it's a public charter school, but you don't meet in a classroom. And you get funds for your children to pay for classes or curriculums, you know, from Blacksmithing with Pat. <laughs> yeah. You just have to be approved vendor. Can you become a vendor? Yeah. Please? I will make that happen. Yeah. Blacksmithing, <laughs> knife throwing. I got the whole thing <laughs> So... You can use those funds for, like, Charlotte's Ballet, um, math tutoring, jujitsu. I mean, nature programs. I really want to put Nolan in a Friday nature program class because yeah. that's just kind of my instinct. He needs to be in nature yeah. a lot. I think it's re- really good for him. It really helps. I mean, yes. I think it's good for everyone, but, like, particularly him. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. Yeah, and we came from AFE. We so. came from AFE, which is a kind of a hybrid um, homeschool school right. in the Santa Cruz City Schools. Okay. And so they have some classes. They have theater. They have ceramics. They have some sports Some sports for middle school and up. So it's kind of a nice little mm-hmm. hybrid. And it was perfect for us um, at the time because we were new to Santa Cruz. And it was just really kind of hard to, you know, find your tribe. <clears throat> so, like... Yeah. Yeah. And and we met a ton of great families and it yeah. was it was actually amazing. I feel like in the first, you know, six months of living in Santa Cruz and going to AFE, we met more like minded families than we did in the previous eight years in Campbell. Oh, that's it was really, yeah. It was actually incredible. So, so why did you switch from that? Oh. Um, we moved to Ben Lomond uh-huh. and so the drive kinda of got a little harder. Okay. And plus I like the idea of having the funds. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Paper. If if a you look, the, if you look, yeah, <laughs> we have okay. Yes. There's funds are necessary. And they have right? a lot of um, things. Just so they, throwing yeah. that out there. Yeah. Right? Uh, so so if you had to look back on all the homeschooling, was there anything that you did that you do differently, or was there anything that you yeah? Is there anything like looking back on it, the way you transitioned, the way you did the schooling, or mm-hmm. is there is there like a, something to avoid, or is there something that that you would have maybe done earlier or later? Or? Um. I don't know. I think there's, if I could go back in time, I would probably. Hmm. I think we would have homeschooled from the get go. That's, yeah, what, that's what I would have done from differently. The get-go. But from like the be- like when we started homeschooling, what I would have done differently. Yeah. Um, but that, I mean, that's a good point. I mean, you would have just started. Yeah. yeah I mean, knowing I what we know get, now. Yeah. I mean, I think. Yeah, how did you know what to do? I think well, I think that's... well the internet. I think for people who are internet. thinking about homeschooling yeah. and want to have their kids at home, and, and us too, you know, it's um, the, the, it's like taking the first. Okay, we're gonna homeschool. Cool. And it's like now what? Okay, do right. we do we invest in like a curriculum and, and put them through this curriculum and and mm-hmm. then or do we just unschool them and, and not really have them do anything? So there's, there's a ton of philosophies and options and combinations of philosophies right. and options. So, so how did you guys choose? Is it different for each kid? Or is it? do you have like a template that you kind of use? I kind of use a template. Um, unschooling wouldn't have worked. It might have worked with Ben. 
but it would not have worked with Nolan. Okay. Why like, not? he might have been illiterate. Like, oh, wait, oh, I don't okay. have to. I'm self guided. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I, can, <laughs> I can read when I feel like reading. That okay. sounds great. Sounds, right. Oaks and him sounds nice. <laughs> right. Because Oaks doesn't want to touch books. He's right. I mean, you can me. He no, loves he books. Loves he books, loves books, but he but doesn't, doesn't want to sit down and do a workbook. Right. And he doesn't want to learn how to read. He can read. Mm-hmm. Like, he can read, but he doesn't want to, like, learn how to read books because then we don't read to him. Well, that's our theory. Well, I asked right. him, and he was like, well, I don't want to grow up, and I don't want you to not read to me. So Aww. he doesn't want to learn how to read. But So the same thing. Like, right. if you told him, no, well, we're sitting down now, and we're learning how to read for 15 minutes a day. Yeah. He, um, he like, resists it. Right. Nolan likes a schedule, though. I don't know if Oaks does. I think he would if we yeah. made one. Sometimes he doesn't like me springing things on him. And, uh, like he, it throws him off. He never likes things. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes. Things by sometimes him. I mean never. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like sometimes I'm like, Alicia, I think we just, you need to have like every hour like planned out ahead of time or else because he doesn't transition well a no. lot. So if he right. thinks that he has a free afternoon to play and do whatever he wants and then it's like, oh, don't forget, you have to read for 30 minutes or you have to practice banjo oh, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. And it's like, oh. Yeah. And so do you do that? Do you have a schedule? Yes, I try. She she writes. Yeah, <laughs> she try. she gives them a little list usually. That yeah, she, I have like a little. During the year, we're yeah we're in summer mode right now. Right, so. right. I'm making lists now. Oh, you I are. Was getting a uh, little. I was, I was getting <laughs> to, <laughs> to Lord of the Flies. Yeah, yeah. it was like a <laughs> less musical for my taste. Right. So. Well, he needs he needs a schedule. Like I remember when he was going to regular school, and I would go in and we find out like during math like he didn't want to do math and so <laughs> there were some kids with you know that may have been on the spectrum the autism spectrum or whatever that were allowed some you know flexibility in the like oh today you don't feel like doing math it's okay you can color and so no one's like well he's coloring i'm gonna go color during <laughs> math too and then right. like and the teachers it's hard for them to kind of you know manage that situation if you have a if you have a kid that you know mm-hmm pushes on that a little bit to try and see. But they are. Yeah. <laughs> so I so am. Like, so he did more math in his first year of homeschooling than oh, he yeah. probably did in his entire. Oh, wow. I mean, that's nothing, you know. I, I, I don't like, blame the teachers at all. Yeah. yeah. Be diplomatic about it. But I really don't. It's just, you know, it's how he learns and yeah. the kind of. Yeah. environment he needs so can you describe a typical day for me it's like a, a typical school day uh, you guys wake up you have breakfast mm-hmm. uh he leaves totally useless <laughs> totally he leaves basically. before we wake up okay good okay, um, okay. so he's out of the house he's out of the house tell me what happens in the house because because you have all different ages so right. like you're not like let's sit down and study this it's right. like it's bang 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 yeah. what goes on so I have no idea. So a typical idea. day, <laughs> I would kind of plan out what we were going to do and write it down, like, so they would have a checklist. So at least we had a plan. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes we don't complete the checklist, but at least we have a goal of what we want to do. And um, and they, it depends on the subject. Sometimes I will need to work with them individually, and then they can go do independent work. Okay. So maybe I'll sit down with Ben and Nolan, and we'll study some history, and then they'll go and then kind of answer some questions. So while you're studying history with Ben and Nolan, what are the other two doing? So Charlotte will play with Clara. Gotcha. Someone's usually always playing with Clara. Like, (laughs) that has to be how it is. Right. And Clara's youngest stage, she had a mother's helper. Yes, and I had a mother's helper when she was a baby. Okay. Because, like like, I think you're alluding to, if you have a baby or like an 18-month-old and trying to talk, like... Raise some older yeah. kids yeah. while that's going on. Is... Right. Let me teach you history. Ah, right. <laughs> yeah. And then maybe when uh, Ben had to do something a little more individual, like intense individual work, maybe he had to write something, a couple paragraphs. I mean, he's older, so. Yeah. You know, so. Then um, maybe Nolan would play with Clara and Charlotte and I would work on math or reading or whatever the subject is. It's it's hard to describe a typical day. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, it's a fluid situation. It's kind of fluid. Yeah. <laughs> it just yeah. goes. We have our goal of what we want to cover and the subjects we want to cover. Sometimes we just have to get out of the house because, like, no one is working well. Mm, right. And mm. I'm going to react badly, and they're going to react badly. And so maybe we'll just go to the beach or something. Gotcha. And so, then I come home and I go, so how was your day? Good. We went to the beach. 
I'm like, you have no idea how lucky you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah they don't. They don't realize you, how lucky you are. Do you realize you're at the beach at one o'clock on a Thursday? <laughs> yeah. Right? Like, so, so it sounds like you're pretty darn organized. Is that mm-hmm. how your psychology works? Is, is yeah. like it, you set stuff up and mm-hmm. you execute on plans mm-hmm. and you move through that? What would it be the case if he was the one in charge of running the homeschool? Would, would it would it function, period? I think it would. I really think it would. He Thank might you. not have the same priorities I have, right? but I think it would be fine. Okay. Yeah. Alicia has a pretty, while we're, we're kind of doing a, like, you know, the road less traveled, she mm-hmm. has a pretty also traditional foundation in, like, schooling and stuff and so she has them do things like copy work and literature you know like some really classic kind of you know teaching techniques and things like that yeah um so that probably wouldn't be my forte if i was homeschooling them and but i know my personality and it's something that i've had to like learn to develop systems with and otherwise i get easily distracted and i just want to do the fun thing and probably have kids that take after me in that respect as well so I've learned to you know even operate even at the at work making sure that I have stuff written down and you know to-do lists and goals and stuff so that's what I would have to do in order to make it happen I'd probably really I'd probably realize a month in that like yeah no one's getting anything done so I should probably get a little more organized every day (laughs) yes For the last three reason. weeks. Yeah. And you guys Man, still can't read. is really yeah. coming along. <laughs> man, the he, math, they're not so Blacksmithing right. and knife throwing like crazy. <laughs> yeah. But man, Whittling. cannot read. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So it, I think it does kind of take a bit of a team, right? Like, because you're saying you could do it. You haven't done it yet. I, I don't think I could do it. Like, I don't think if it was my responsibility to homeschool my kids, I could do it. Um, to be so honest. Do like, you with, think, is that because it... It's more about like, because you love spending time with your kids, it's more about being organized enough to make sure that they accomplished enough? Correct. Okay. Like if you gave me, if you gave me like, they need to achieve one thing in a day, I could get that. I think if I told you what to do, you would do it. True. But that wouldn't be me setting up what to do. That would be you telling me what to do. Of course, I could always execute on it. Right. But it would be a matter of you being like, here's what's happening tomorrow. And I go, okay, wife. I shall do that. Um, <laughs> but if it was like, all right, what are we going to do tomorrow? You know, like, right. you're like, well, we're going to do the same thing we did today. Like, oh, we left the house. It's noon. I didn't even realize we hadn't left the house before noon. I'm like, you guys want breakfast? You know, like, right. yeah, that's, uh, I'm just a little bit less and I think that, that is a different reason why you would have a challenge homeschooling, right? And right. I think a lot of people, the reason they'd have a challenge homeschooling is because they just have a hard time being with their kids all day long, every oh. day. Yeah. Right? So mm-hmm. that's a totally different animal. I really like being with my kids that's all day me long. Too. I really do. Me too. And sometimes they do drive you? me nuts. Yeah, love it. See, yeah. I don't... I think it also takes practice. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, you build up the, like a tolerance and you become more patient and mm-hmm. you, you, you just like learn who they are more. So you... But what causes that? What co- what causes because I don't think I, I know plenty of people who are with their kids all the time out of necessity and do not want to be there. Is that like a psychological thing, a hang up in their own head where they're like, "Well, I think maybe I they, just want to escape," or is it like, yeah, may, or maybe just they are in a different stage of their life and they don't feel like they've accomplished what they want to accomplish, mm-hmm. or or they're clinging you know, to another stage in their life. That's what I'm saying. I, I think right? it's a mindset thing, it is, right? For sure. And, right. It's, and I, I heard Will Smith say this one time about, like, <laughs> quoting Will Smith, um, but, like, no. just about... I was expecting <laughs> yeah, I mean, his podcast. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, Josh, hey, Josh coming on. on. He's going like, to quote Will Smith again. Like, I just, every time I hang out with him, he's just... Uh, um, <laughs> wisdom. Uh, yeah. I think he said it's all about accepting your new normal, right? And I think yeah. that's, like, totally mm-hmm. true because... And people always, like we were, you and I were talking earlier today about what the, is the most difficult phase of having children. Because people, when they hear we have four kids, they're like, oh, man, you know, that's crazy. We only have two. I don't know how you do it. But in reality, like, two was our hardest phase of parenting. Yeah. Right. And then mm-hmm. zero to one is the hardest transition in parenting. Right? Oh, yeah. And so sure. that, oh, yeah. What that, like, mm-hmm. and the longer you don't accept your new normal, the more you're just going to be like, Oh, it was so rad when we could just like sit by the pool yeah. and, and, you know, listen to my 
Bose audio speaker and just hang out. <laughs> I had, I mean, I, I don't, oh, right. I think some people raise an entire kid without accepting that normal. Like, right. they always look to that and like, like, uh, I even talked to my older brother just recently and he's like, oh, Lakin's off to college and, uh, it's so great. We can just go on vacation and hang out blah, blah, blah. and I'm like, bro, you're talking to the wrong guy. Like, right. I just got back from five months traveling around the world where I got to hang out with my kids the entire time and I would do it all over again in a heartbeat. Yeah. Like there's nothing in my life with my kids that my kids are preventing me from doing. And I think that some people place that on the child mm -hmm. and, it, and there is a reality yeah. there, like a financial reality and like uh, there's schooling and there's mm -hmm. other stuff like that. But I think there's also a certain level of, <clears throat> it's, it's an escape of, I don't feel like, well, I can't do this because of you. And like, even right. if you don't necessarily intentionally blame the kid, it's like, mm -hmm. it's like an underlying level of resentment. Yeah. Yeah. Which seems, I, I, and I think kids okay. can still grow up great with that, but still it's like, I hold on to that. Yeah. I don't know. Totally. And I also think that like you guys discovered on your, your journeys around the world that you get better at being together the more you're together. Mm -hmm. And I think when we started homeschooling our kids, it was like, I could see this pattern, like if, as they grow older, in the afternoons, they'd just be like ships passing in the night because they're not together all day long. And right. maybe they don't have the same peer groups. Um, <laughs> Nolan was lucky because Ben had some friends that were really like, you know, accepting of Nolan him. and then he would be in their, part of their peer groups. But as they got older, it's like yeah. you're uh, gone from each other all day and right. then you're just around each other for a few hours in the evening and you just kind of annoy each other and then you're just yeah. gone and again. Yeah, you guys are both exhausted from, yeah, you yeah. know, being out of the you're house. The, it's your and, worst moments. Right. Your, yeah, totally. Your worst you're, moments you're together. Like, mm -hmm. talked out, you know, and kids, like, spend a lot of energy, some more than others, trying to, like, follow all the rules in like a structured system like and school and so when, they come, when they come home it's just like Bleh, yeah. you know like totally <laughs> yeah so yeah I think as you spend more time together it's just like you get better at being together they all really like each other for the most part I mean we do have some sibling things but they do really like to be together yeah they do love each other yeah that's really yeah. cool I'm just hung up on the figuring out I don't know. I, I feel like I'm mean with my thought process towards people who don't like to be with their kids all the time. See, like we've in my felt, head, I'm well, like, I'm like, fuck you. Like, <laughs> you I also remember we're quite judgmental. <laughs> yeah, I understand that, but <laughs> I, I know. But there's people, there are people out there, like you're saying, it's their reality, and I'm just mm -hmm. wondering what can get them over that. Well, I guess like so. Imagine <laughs> if you were the new normal. Okay. How do we accept the new normal? Yes. Like, well, I think like you're saying, like financial things could come into play. You know, imagine if you right. had, I don't know, one parent was the the breadwinner and the other mm -hmm. parent was staying home with the kids and that person staying home with the kids didn't want to be staying home with the kids. They wanted to be working, but, but they can't because they're not earning enough, you know, mm -hmm. like financially it wouldn't make sense. So they're stressed out and, and it might not be that they're accepting where they are in their life at that point. It right. might be something completely different. Like they want to, I don't know, put their, their self to use more. I mean, it's, it's, Yes, most of our life is about our kids, but it's not. We have other stuff going on. Totally. Do you know what I mean? And I think some people feel trapped with their kids when they're at home with them all day. They're just totally. And there's like all this other ancillary kind of relationship stuff between the parents that also, you know, how you act to someone isn't necessarily always a result of your interactions with that person. It can be, you know, a carryover from exactly. someone else. And then I think, like you were saying, like sometimes – the family dynamic of who's working and who's watching the kids just kind of like falls into place and it's not like a predetermined or mm -hmm. like a planned outcome. And so, and then there's like on both sides, maybe there's like a lack of respect for the person who's at home with the kids all day and what they have to go through. And then on the other side, maybe yeah. like, uh, you don't even know what I'm going through kind of situation. Right. And then, and then the, the, the <laughs> just, like resentment and those mm -hmm. comparisons sit in and, and it might not even be that they don't want to spend time with their kids. It might just be like, their life is not great at the moment and the kids are the catalyst. Yeah. Because, I, I mean, like, <clears throat> sure, there's people that don't want to spend time with their kids, but I think I think also people are like, oh, I'm getting away from my kids for the weekend. Like, I think that's also, like, I don't know if they really mean it. Huh. I, think some, I think some people I think for some sure. People I think some people do. Yeah. I yeah, think actually. for sure some people mean it. Get but... turnt this Friday. It's like, dude, you're, <laughs> you've got two kids. What do you mean right. you're getting turnt this Friday? <laughs> it's Monday and you're looking forward to Friday? Come yeah. on. But I think, but again, like, think about that. Like, what are they doing for the rest of the time? 
chest. You know what I mean? Like living a good life. Yeah, I, I yeah. think I think that's more than just the fact that they're spending all their time with their kids. Yeah, I think we're very very lucky. With we're privileged. The life we're incredibly we live. privileged. So it's like we have yeah. these opinions about people who don't have as good a life as us, and it's it's hard for us to see. Like we love our kids because right. we're so happy. You know, well, but, but we we. I mean, you guys sound, seem like it too. I, uh, even though I didn't know she actually existed until relatively recently, <laughs> um, uh, and I've known you for I don't know, like fifteen years, ten years, something like that. Um, but we're really confident, and we've talked a lot about this on our. We had our six-year anniversary, which we thought was our seven-year anniversary. It turns out it's our. <laughs> <six>. <laughs> a little math. It just feels, feels so long. It really right? feels like. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it like we're really confident in our relationship mm -hmm. that that's not on shaky ground at all, right. and we're relatively comfort comfortable financially. You know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff we can fall back on. So there's these these giant kind of uh, these giant pieces of our life that are not shaky. You right. know, like so when you add the instability of a child into it, it's like well, that's the child instability. Like we can fall back on these other. Mm -hmm great things mm -hmm. and, and maybe that's the, the stem of it is like people need to work on all components of their life and they might be on shaky ground in like three or four areas like yeah. I'm not financially secure I don't have a great relationship or my communication is shit with my significant other and now I'm adding this ball of mush to the mix that right. that needs my attention all the time mm -hmm. I can see that I, ha I can have sympathy for that um, but I also think you got to get over it and, totally. and, yeah. and, uh, yeah. and be Do a parent right. like you can you can you can you can crumble down 18 years from now no, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. 18 years to, from now you have to suck it up i, yeah. I think it's, it's your responsibility it's just, when you have children. Yeah. right it is uh, we, we, uh, mm -hmm. the last episode we had was a pretty good example of that uh the last episode we had we had um casey and natalie on and natalie got pregnant at 15 with twins mm -hmm. Um, and she, and she was at a, a home for youth when she got this, like her parents sent her away to it cause she was having underage. Uh, she didn't get pregnant there. She no, found out. She, she found out she was okay. pregnant there, but her parents had sent her there cause they sent found her out away she was like, like sexually active. Sent her away with like drug addicts and all these other, she, the, the only thing that she was doing was that she was having Aww. sex. And yeah. so she was in this, they're like rehab. She right. was very for, out of For place. being a, a kid, you right, know, like right. and being, wow. and it's like, go. Oh! So like yeah. obviously there was there was a not the greatest scenario and right. she was like no f this I'm having these kids and I'm gonna raise these kids and they're gonna have an amazing life and it was it was like a, a perfect example of somebody in a not a great situation just, just, like, just, the best just being like that's it that's it I'm mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it and I'm gonna prove you guys wrong and like that's the worst case scenario right right like totally. not worst case but like the hardest like yeah. you have no backing. No financial backing, no supportive totally. family, no like education. You're a child, no. you're a child yeah. yourself. You have to like, and that's crazy. And the kids, uh, she has two more kids, but they're they're doing great. Um, yeah, that's yeah. so you can do it. You it definitely just, can. Yeah, and I think it's hard to sometimes like because we do come from like each of us nuclear families, and you know, so we've had like a good foundation leading up to it, and then we both. I think we just have the personality where we're you know comfortable in our little family unit and I don't think not everyone has that same personality mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. neither of us drink actually so it, there was never that like phase of our life that we feel like we need to get back to where we need to go out and party and stuff so how long have you been married we've been married <clears throat> since 01 so since 01 17 years wow. almost years, oh my god we've been together since 1995 95 wow. I wasn't even born in 95. No, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I actually thought that might be true. Yeah. For a second there. I was like, what? I was like so used to so hearing about people born like, you know, and what's that? How old are you when you guys started dating? I'm uh, 19 and 17. Yeah. Wow. That's cool. No, you just turned 20. Where did you meet? Um, our parents kind of set us up. So our brothers are the same age. Okay. And they played soccer together. And then I was, we actually went to high school together, but uh -huh. I'm two years older than her, so we didn't mm -mm, hang out in the... You're like, I'm going to hang out with you. You're two <laughs> yeah. years younger oh, than me. What are you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we started getting thrown together, like, just at soccer tournaments, and our mm -hmm. families became friends, and I think our moms actually started plotting. And, they started plotting. That's yeah, for sure. Which is really funny. Are your parents still, like, close? 
Um, they were. My mom passed away, and my oh. dad's actually passed away as well. Oh, I'm so but, sorry. But they were. But so they were. it was really cool yeah, yeah. in the early days of our relationship because our families were such good friends. Yeah. That mm-hmm. and we had holidays together. And, yeah, and like her cool. mom was like over being with talking about families and yeah. holidays, like yeah. over being with their family or on hosting the holidays, a holiday. Or she's hosting like, See? so I'll she's bring like, yeah, Perfect. we're going to the Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm cool. like, sweet. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. So. so what was the? Is there anything you look back on in your relationship that was a really hard part, like a hard time? That you guys made it through? Um, mm. Not between us, necessarily. Yeah. There's like life stressors. Life yeah. Like, like my mom, you know, had breast cancer and she was sick and then just me dealing with that and then yeah. her passing away. Yeah. Did you have kids? At- no. Okay. So that's always sad that I feel like generation we don't ever have kids or just mothering without a mother is kind right. of yeah. hard too. That's a whole another level of, you know... I think what is so amazing about what she's done is that she's raised four kids, homeschooled them for a good chunk of it now. And like, you know, you have, we have my parents help and you know, that kind of thing. But it's nothing like your own mom where you can just totally totally burden without, you know, feeling guilty at all. Have you seen the, uh, it's just the science behind like eggs in a woman's womb. They're formed. In, I mean, I know about that. They're science. formed in <laughs> utero, right? So, like, oh, when, right, when right. she's pregnant, their whole life, yeah, right. So, when she's pregnant with uh, uh, your daughter, her da- your daughter has eggs in her belly, which means those eggs are your eggs. So it's like a generation below is from the generation above. So basically, your children are like directly your mother. Right. Like in every single way, like because yeah, like really those crazy. eggs were in there. That's so crazy. That's yeah, I've never when, actually thought about, <laughs> never that. about that. Right? right? Like it blew my mind when I heard that yeah. the, the science behind yeah. that. So like when there, when when you were in her, your mom's stomach, you had eggs in your belly being yeah. formed, like in the wall there, and like that means those are her eggs because yeah. they were in they were in her. I like that. Like I yeah, really it's like really that. cool That's actually. Really it, it is. It's yeah. one of the reasons that like the genetic traits like skip generations right. too is because they're they're there with directly with mm-hmm. the generation before. Yeah, like you mm-hmm. know, like everyone who knows my mum, he's like just looks exactly like my mom. Mm-hmm. It's really yeah. Funny. Uh, my oldest is like when he was first born. I was like, oh, it's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's crazy. <laughs> like I did not expect to have a blonde blue eyed kid, especially oh, yeah. you know, like right out the gate. I thought my kid would look like Nolan actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> and he does. Like, not, and he, but yeah, it was the second exactly. one. Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, was that like every kid you had? Because that's how we feel about food. We're like, what's this one going to oh, look like? Oh, God. Yes. It's like the yeah. most fun thing. You're like, thing. ooh, the genetic lottery. Yeah. Like, and you should, gonna... like, now, I mean, I don't know, like, your your youngest is four, but the ultrasounds now are crazy. Just like the regular ultrasounds are, like, 3D. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, like, we've got, like, photos of him. It looks like a little baby. And it wasn't like, a, oh, let's go in and get the special photos. It's like, just, okay, it's they, just, they, like, they, standard now. like, let me take a photo. Bam. And then what it does is it does a 3D rendering and then it paints the face, the colors in. So, like, it doesn't take, like, a photo mm-hmm. of the color. It just, like, takes, like, a couple photos and then it does, like, a 3D mapping and then fills it in with color. <laughs> so you're like, ah, a little flesh color <laughs> yeah, they didn't face that. that's, they yeah, did oh, that. <laughs> And it's, so like, crazy. right there, like, with the little <laughs> scanner. It's like, check it out. In our day, like, 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 wait, is that an arm <laughs> or... <laughs> I think yeah. that's a girl. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, cr- it's crazy. And the blood testing now is nuts. They yeah. did yeah. have the, well, they didn't have the spit genetic test, uh, um, but they did have the blood test. So we found out that? we were having, you know, a girl like, a girl like 10 weeks. Yeah, 10 weeks. weeks. Yeah. yeah. Excuse me? Yeah. <laughs> How? Like, and did I you poke the baby? No, just your blood. They're, what? Yeah. <laughs> their little cells are floating around. I didn't know that was possible know, until recently. Mm-hmm. Life is crazy. Like the fact that it happens and how it happens. Oh, yeah. I hear we always have cells floating around in us from our babies. Really? Like we do for the rest of our lives. Wow, that's little bits. I didn't know that. Yeah. I have no idea. I'm just learning a bunch of stuff today. (laughs) Mind blown. You don't have to Google that and look it up and get the details. (laughs) So I can. have to Google several things. Well, no, I just have to understand for myself. (laughs) No, you have to prove me wrong. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, bubonic plague. Bubonic plague in squirrels. Yes. Squirrel, squirrel boobs is what I'm going to Google. <laughs> For me, I shouldn't Google squirrel boobs. <laughs> I don't think you should. <laughs> Sounds like a bad idea. Uh, and then cells and bodies yeah. from children. Um, so we, I think we beat the homeschooling to death. 
which is good. <laughs> well, but I think it's a great topic. Cause... Do you think you're ever going to send your kids to a normal school at this point um, in time, or they get like, <clears throat> because I mean, you can't home college, can you? <laughs> yeah, so that's. Yeah, so no. they will go to college, but Ben's actually going into ninth grade. Mm -hmm. And when we started homeschooling, it was like, well, we'll do it up to high school kind of thing. You know, like we weren't 100% sure that it was going to be right for them forever. Um, and, you know, in some ways, like he's 14 now, so we leave some of that decision up to him. Yeah. And he loves being homeschooled and wants to continue. Um, I think as the kids get older, like you can really, he can see the advantages it's affording him too. Yeah. Um, he's also not a restless kid, as I was saying. So it's not like he is feels like he's missing out on anything. Right. What he he's loves is the introvert. idea that he can go to jujitsu and he can practice guitar and he can, you know, learn a language or, you know, do like all this stuff and be able to fit it in. And he also It's a lot more freedom. Yeah. And he, he has that. he has um he loves art and he loves drawing and he has he sees the industrial artists and designers work at RPM and he loves what they do. And so he has, I think, his eyes on that as a future career. And so I think cool. he knows that if he's not in high school all day long, that he's going to get to start, you know, being a part of that. Right. So, and my brother is um, an engineer and they have so much experience. He has so much experience in all the CAD CAM design and manufacturing and, you know, working SOLIDWORKS and all those crazy graphics programs. And so I think he sees that as a learning resource for him. So, nice. really so cool. yeah, I mean, at this point, oh, homeschooling is the never, plan, but, but never say never. Yeah. 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 So I was um, listening to a podcast the other day about a woman who homeschooled her four children. Mm -hmm. And she said, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't know if this is because you've got a 14 year old now. And she said that the best part of homeschooling is like you're saying the freedom for them to kind of decide their own path so mm -hmm. like if they're interested in a topic then they can kind of delve into that themselves yeah and, um rather than being told okay well now you have to do an hour of geography and right. you know like if he really wants to go down the engineering route then it's completely it. kind of up right. to totally. him and um like would you would you say that that's what you guys really enjoy about it as well that there's that freedom Definitely. to i love the freedom of it um and I feel like I haven't been able to allow that as much because when my, my father died a couple of years ago and then we had some legal stuff and then I just couldn't homeschool the way, I mean, legal stuff with his estate as the trustee and stuff. Um, we didn't have any. Legal. We didn't have any legal <laughs> stuff, but yeah, just legal stuff with the trust. And um, I felt like I did, I'm like, this is just the work you need to do. Right. Because like I really... Let's just get through it. Let's just get through it. Mm -hmm. I can't be like the best homeschooling mom in the world and be creative. Because that takes effort. It takes a lot of effort. So this year I'm actually looking forward to being more creative and um, have the ability to explore. And with the younger ones, more. do you like sense that? Do you like see what they're getting interested in and and kind of try and adopt it? Like Pat's mom's actually really good with doing that with Oaks. Like she'll yeah. like see what he's interested in. Oh, Oaks is really interested in like... Mm -hmm you know, comedy. And so then the next time they go to the library, we have all these books on, um, like they're joke books and they're totally inappropriate and stuff. But you know, she, she's like, she's very good at, yeah. um, like fostering those. I think I like, could be better at that. Yeah. I'm not, the, I'm yeah. not that great at it myself. I definitely think I could be better at that. Um, I think I have a lot of baggage from actually going through public school myself and like, Oh, am I doing enough? Am right. I covering this? Uh, you know, what are the holes in their education? And I let that fear and anxiety kind of get in the way sometimes. Mm -hmm. Love those holes. Yeah. That's how I imagine I would be too. Yeah. Like if the kids spell something wrong, it's like, like, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. like I'm failing you. Right. I yeah. think, I mean, if, what was the thing we were listening to the other day that was talking about like this next generation of kids like doesn't need to know information. They need to know how to find right. information and how to build context, you know, like, right. And, and how to enact information, how to learn quickly. Mm -hmm. And like, it's not the information that's necessary. It's the how to apply that information. Totally. It's right. the how to find that information. And right. these days it's like, there's it's, clever tricks to finding. It's all at the tip of our fingers, literally on our phones. Like, mm -hmm. It's kind of back to reading, writing, and arith arithmetic. And then everything else is just like info. Right. right? So it's like... We don't have to specialize in something like, at a young age. It's, it's try crazy. to remind Alicia, it's like, 
you know, they can read, they can write, they're, mm -hmm. they're getting their math done. Like those, if you get those things done, every, everything can be learned. Yeah. From, Do, you know? I feel like the fear like, comes from yeah. outside though. Like, yes. like you're saying from like how you were yeah. raised, the same right. with me, like how I was raised was very conventional schooling. And then on top of that, like you start talking about homeschooling to like family or friends and well, what about the social aspect? Who are they? What about yeah. they need oh to be socialized? And yeah. what about um, well, what if they want to go to college? And then you're just right. like, actually, well, I don't know. What if they do want to go? I don't know. I haven't thought that far ahead. Yeah. You know, like it's like there's answers to all those questions, there, but it's like are. my kid's five. Like I don't need right. to deal with that right now. Or you get the people who will quiz them. Yes. Like in, you know, a <laughs> no, perfect stranger will find out we're homeschooling and then, you well, know, ask What's them, this color? Like, yeah. <laughs> Cynthia. Yeah. No, that, that's green. <laughs> that was on a, you guys ever watch the show New Girl? It's Denise. No. No. New Girl's a great show. It was yeah. a really funny show. It's kind of friends-ish. Yeah. But like yeah. a modern version of it. Yeah. But the most, it's their final season and they they have a three-year-old, one of the, couples has a three-year-old daughter and they were deciding what to do with her at school and one they were playing the extreme so the the main girl and it was like super hippie and like creative self-expression and, mm -hmm. and just like like what's the name of this color call it denise and it's like <laughs> it's green it's green and like she like the the she was all like give the color emotion and feeling right. blah blah and and then the dad was all like this, like you, if you yeah. if you get the right color, I give you a dollar. And like that's yeah. how the world works. Yeah, and like yeah, that's yeah. all the, the systems for it. And they were the polar extremes. And then the kid was actually like right in between and like had both sides, which is pretty funny. That is uh, funny. So they, they kind of like play the different sides. Yeah, you definitely get like even though homeschooling is a lot more mainstream now, and there is like a ton more yeah. resources, and um, there are new reasons why people are homeschooling. You're, you definitely get challenged. Still. What do you guys say to and the like those questions, like the socializing and like, oh, are they learning enough and oh, are, you, are they getting tested and what would you? Well, this. with the socializing thing, I usually say I think the burden should be on like, why do we have these schools where we take these kids that are just the same age that happen to live in the same neighborhood and then just put them in a classroom together? Totally. Why is that the best way to socialize someone? Mm -hmm. Obviously, no. that's the best way. Do you say that? <laughs> Do you say that? We don't, we don't Do have that? any. I have said that. Okay. Because, like, I, I don't know if I'm, like, quick-witted enough to, like, do that, you know? Like, I usually say, <laughs> what um, you, we've like seen the socializing that happens at regular school. You know, well, That's like, a good one. I like that. Well, I, I mean, but, but, but smug about it. I was, I was going to say, like, <laughs> so you're, you're asked. They're being, they're being assholes to you. <laughs> yes, it's true. You know, so yeah, it's like, well, you, know. you should do a question back. I think, I think it would open up a conversation. It's like, mm -hmm. that's that. So like if, if they go, Hey, what about socializing? You're like, well, how do you think the socialization really works at a normal public school? And yeah. then, and then see yeah. if they can describe yeah. that to you. It's like, what's the socialization I, yeah. that you're talking about? Okay. What are the benefits to that? Right. Awesome. And then let me tell you why these benefits, because I right. think you can really easily direct that yeah. conversation yeah. towards like, well, they're going to get that. And I don't think that actually happens. I mean, our kids, think it I, my, I usually answer with our kids see other kids right. literally every day. I right? mean, that's the truth. Right. Well, that's I the mean, truth. like we, it, it they is. have, they're not locked in the house. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's um, how the homeschooling works. You lock them in a room, mm -hmm. you yeah. get this stack of papers done. <laughs> And then you go smoke peyote. Like that's, <laughs> that's that, I think that's homeschool, isn't it? Uh, no, no, we have yeah. wrapped it up. And then what uh, about what about the one about like, well, are they are they like meeting the demands of school like criteria? Like, what is if they want to go to college? How do they have their? I don't know what is it in this. You country? need a GED. It's like the easiest thing in the world. You to can get. go to. Like, it's it's not hard and. But you can go. To, it's harder to get into maybe a CSU or UC where it's all about numbers and right. all that stuff. Okay. But to get into a private school. They usually know now how to deal with homeschooling families and right. understand the unique situation. Stanford loves homeschoolers, right? Because they're self-directed yes. and they, they want actually to learn say they and... the homeschooling um, students or that were homeschooled sometimes you know have um, a better time than maybe the prep school kids. That go there. Prep school. I mean, it's always been a fascinating thing for me, and like this is a lot of the common stuff that's being talked about these days. But it's like. Prep school. I went to a college prep school. Mm -hmm. What's like, a prep school? It's like you. They're preparing you for college. They're like you do extracurricular work all the time, and mm -hmm. like you're you're getting oh, ready. Oh, oh, to go like Mount Madonna. Like Mount Madonna. Yeah. So they're just preparing you to go to college. Kind of, but that's all schools. Like in all reality, they're just prep schools. But these ones are extra emphasis on getting your extracurricular activities in, and and making sure you don't fall behind, and mm -hmm. da 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 da. Like mm -hmm. they and then higher level classes. And right. They're they're getting you the the certificates that you need in order to right. apply to higher level schools, which was never my ambition. And I, I didn't finish college. So I, 
I went to like a low end anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Beside that though, like, uh, but it's, it's, I think the thing that's being talked about a lot in uh, kind of the modern understanding of college is that it's so different than the, the school that you did before that if you didn't learn how to like, how to learn and how to adapt mm-hmm. and how to do these things on your own and you kind of, your hand was held through the whole thing, you get to college and you're like, I have freedom. Oh, I'm just going to use all the freedom and do nothing. Yeah. You know, like, or you get anxiety. Kind of, that's what or I mean. Or you get anxiety. Yeah. They yeah. get anxiety because they don't know how to right. do anything on their own. Whereas if it was something that you chose to do through mm-hmm. homeschooling, it was mm-hmm. like, ah, oh, I chose to get this work. I wanted to go to college. Mm-hmm. I made this right. happen. Like, you took the steps. And I don't know. It's empowering. And they do a lot of independent work when they homeschool. Yeah. You know, right. they work a lot on their own. Right. So. Um, and then Ben to will do that. end up going to Cabrillo for classes, you know, yeah. like probably starting junior year. Right. So you or could earlier. potentially yeah. get your AA while you're in high school. Right. You know, <laughs> it's not it's not like a you know a mandatory no, right. goal yeah. or anything, but it's you can go as a, a transfer student. And in fact, like I think <laughs> when we were growing up, um, like it was just like a given. We went to Los Gatos High, and it's just like a given that you're going to go to a four year school after that. Right. And it was like almost kind of looked down upon if you had to go to a JC or something. But I, at the time, I like wish someone would have told me, hey, if you go to a JC for two years, you can pretty much go to any college you want. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and that, and that just wasn't like common thought yeah. at the time. Oh, JC so, was a junior college? Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, yeah. I, I, I shouldn't have gone to college straight out of school. I wasn't. And like, I think a lot of kids I wasn't ready for it. I just like wasted a bunch of money my first year and, mm-hmm. And then it took me like two years to realize what I really wanted to do. And then even then afterwards, like, you know, I got a degree in sport and exercise science and sports psychology. But and sure, like it took me down to CrossFit. But <clears throat> I, I don't think I learned nothing I learned at school then right. paralleled. Over you got some to sick debt, though. <laughs> some really good debt. Yeah. And my anatomy is pretty good. Like I still remember, you yeah. know, anatomy. But you apart- definitely couldn't have picked that up anywhere else. Exactly. Thirty dollar online course. Especially because my Crush learning style is like, like read a book. Like I, you know, like that's how I that's how I learn is by just looking at stuff. Yeah. So where, yeah, where did you, you go to college? Um, in New Zealand. Okay. Yeah. So that's, I, I had the same major. Oh yeah. 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 Nice. So my anatomy was pretty good at one time too. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I actually have been thinking a lot about uh, kind of from the other angle of the homeschooling nuclear family sort of deal and you know there's there's a lot of science that backs that we as a humans were tribal people like mm-hmm. that's how we survived it right. wasn't the idea of a nuclear family that only became a reality once we started to be possessive over <clears throat> land and heritage and things along those lines mm-hmm. so we only moved into that in like these industrial age where we were able to farm and you could have your family work there and you wouldn't need the help and you could separate yourself out from other people um, so, uh, there's a much longer history of being surrounded by people and it's like letting your kids be raised by everyone and da 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 da. And I feel like for me, I worry a little bit with the fact that with homeschooling, you're isolating out more. Like yeah, I'm always, and it's not like a lack of socialization, but like it's, it's, I'm, I'm building a psychology into my kids of always being around family. And I don't, right. and I think that that's cool selfishly for myself because <laughs> yeah. I love my kids, but <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if that's maybe like a. Uh, but I if, think if we look at our heritage, like if if we maybe have more psychological expanding expansion to happen when we do get very differing points of view, like maybe there maybe there's a hybrid in between. Like there's a we can have a tribe that ha- offers their other opinions, but the main theme is the parent. I don't know. Yeah, and I think, well, we've talked about this before, about having, like, other adult mentors in the children's lives. And I know a lot exactly. of homeschooling people do that. Yeah. Like, um, you know, whether it be that, you know, let's say your kid's interested in music, and then they go to an adult music teacher that they spend time with and that you respect, mm-hmm. and it's not just about teaching them how to play music. It's also about, like, or, you know, like, let's say Oaks is into throwing knives, and rather than you teaching him how to throw knives, he goes to someone else to... You know, and I think, like, having other adults... I'm not worried about the peer thing because I don't, you know, like, mm-hmm. having peer impressions doesn't really make sense to me because kids don't really know what they're doing. But especially <laughs> yeah. at this age, um, you know. I but, think it's balanced, well, I think it right? also happens. Right. So Just kind of naturally or just the tribe yeah. that you build. Yeah. Because it's when they're little, you. they're kind of around you. And yeah. that's just kind of naturally, I think, how it is. 
And as they get older, they just, you know, start taking guitar lessons, start doing martial arts and um, dance and start, you know, developing good relationships with other adults that can yeah. have, you know, um, and our, you know, influence. we're around friends and stuff. I think, and friends. Yeah, I think we our are. Friends, yeah. Our friends, like we have a good solid group of friends who we trust the, the parents yeah. like, to teach our kids, to discipline our kids. You know, we never right. interfere if, if they're, you know, having like a yeah. disciplinary moment. I think we're comfortable with that. You know, we're, <clears throat> we're not like, oh, no, no, you can't discipline our kids. That's not right. You know, like I had to discipline a little girl in the hot tub today. <laughs> had no problem disciplining other people's kids. Oh, no. oh my god! It's like I can see it in his face. I'm like, oh, he's about to say something. He's about to. But I'm not like harsh. Right. I just like look at a kid and I just tell him exactly what I I think they right. should be doing at the moment. Like this little girl walked up to Arrow while he's in the pool and, and hot tub. And he's not good at swimming. Right. So he's sitting there and he's holding these two little weights that he had on the side. These little round discs. And he's like do 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 do. And she's like kind of his age. Uh-huh. Yeah. She was a little older. Maybe a little bit older, and she just walks up and grabs him, and just starts pulling him. And he's like, "No, no!" And then he just goes, oh, and just pulls him out of his hand. And the mom was from me to the mic, like that's how far away the mom was, and just sitting there watching it. And this was just before you got there, um, and just sitting there watching it. And I was like, <laughs> "What? Like, like, <laughs> like how did you? And you're not going to say anything?" And I like, and and Arrow like looks at me, and I stood up, and I walked over, and I like looked at the girl, I was like, and she was, she the, the mom said the girl's name was like Clarence or something like that. She's like, Clarence, so blah, blah, blah. I was like, Clarence, don't do that again. <laughs> and then I, I, I gave, I gave uh, Arrow these other two discs that were there. There's that uh, moment where you're like wondering, is she going to say something? Is she not gonna uh, The mom? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I so want that, them to yeah, say something. Yeah, totally. I want yeah, that don't confrontation. Want to I'm like, oh, okay, let's talk. Like, yeah. let's yeah. have a conversation about why you can do whatever you want with your kid. But as soon as it impacts my kid, we're going to have a conversation. <laughs> like, It's amazing when it happens. It's been, it's Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we. I, I. There was this guy who was losing it at the pool the other day. Yeah. I felt so bad. Like he clearly it, it wasn't. Looked, yeah, yeah, it looked like he didn't look. He he was the father, but he clearly was not like in any state to be looking after children. Like I think you know he looked after the kid maybe like once a week or something. Mm-hmm. Kids. He just kids. He just he did not know how to deal with these poor kids and he was so stressed and so embarrassed because you know when you try and get your kids to get out of the pool and they don't oh my god yeah. and you're so helpless and, and you're, you're like, just like and you like basically are stepping into the pool to try and pull them out <laughs> it's happened to and me. yeah i've pulled oaks out once yeah i pulled oaks out of the pool when he was little and he pushed against me and then i slipped and he <laughs> literally on the you know the, it's really slippery yeah and he just slipped and landed flat on his back he was like less than two like it was <laughs> But so this guy was just like yelling at them, like he. But he just kept repeating. So he was yelling, but then never following through. He's like, "That's yeah. it. If we don't do this, I'm gonna yeah. rip you out of there." But he just wouldn't. <laughs> That's and then <laughs> that, that would go. That, that would went on for 15 minutes, like 15, the 20 were, minutes. The kids were literally laughing at him, like they they like, knew. They just they they've oh. never listened to him in their lives. Obviously, you know he's not around. I mean, You're I'm like, totally <laughs> creating the scenario. He might be with them all day. I don't know, but it just if he does, just he's, like, if he does, he's not learning. Yeah, he's not like he's like time you gotta get. Yeah, well, he was like a he was like a sarcastic Santa Cruz, or not a sarcastic, he like a classic Santa Cruz guy, like uh, uh, like yeah. the point boy who born and raised here, serves his whole life, wears mm-hmm. all surfer gear, and like, mm-hmm. um, not to put a, a thing on it, but like does construction, like you know, and that, that's mm-hmm. fine. Like I love construction, I think that's great, but like that's what his image was, you know, like right. I surf, I do construction, and maybe I see my kids occasionally, and that was the the persona he had, and he was like nonchalant, but then he was getting embarrassed because he didn't know how to control the kids, and I was in the hot tub, like. I was in there with Arrow, like going around, <laughs> and the kids were there, and they were just ignoring him, and he just really couldn't, couldn't get the kids to move, and like, and he was like doing harsh kind of threats of like, I'm gonna take this away, and I'm gonna do this, yeah. and I was like, and and the two kids were there, and uh, one of the kids started splashing, and like it was, it was like, not started, like was continuing to splash. I was turned over, and I grabbed him, and I picked him up, and I was like, <laughs> I think your dad wants you out of the pool, and and he looked at me, and he he was like, why? And I was like, because it's time to go. And he was like, okay. And then I just put him on the side and the kid got up and got out of the pool and then his brother followed him. And it was like, there was no interaction other than that. It was like, why? Here's why. Oh. And then they left. And it was like someone was, I don't know if it was because it was someone else or like it was, it was a really quick. Well, like, I don't think it's the first time that this has happened. Yeah. But I mean, it, <laughs> it just bummed pattern, me out. You know, like, that like, they, like, they the dad, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's hard sometimes it's to watch. Hard. Like, like, remember the, uh. Ken's Labyrinth thing? 
Oh. Yeah. <laughs> usually, so Alicia is, is pretty good about biting her tongue yeah, in these situations, usually. usually, but... So we went to see Pan's Labyrinth mm-hmm. years ago. You remember that? Oh yeah, it was great. Yeah, but it was so Dark. we were there. We're sitting there, and this family like, comes one in of the with most like violent a, movies. I mean, it was pretty yeah. violent. Yeah, what comes in with like a three-year-old? Oh yeah, good call. And a five-year-old, <laughs> and I was just like, <gasps> and I didn't even. I wasn't even mom yet, but it just like really bothered me. So at the end, and they stayed the whole this. time. They stayed the whole time. Pan's Labyrinth is really dark. Oh, yeah. It's really it's dark like, and it's, violent. Yeah, and there's a monster that eats babies. There's oh my like, and, and it's like really like creepily heads done. In. Like, yeah, super a fantastic movie. It's a really it good Guillermo movie. Guillermo del Toro. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So they walk out, and I say something. What did I say? You like, said, I, I, "Do you think you know that movie was a little violent?" Or she's, <laughs> I think you see there. You say. <laughs> Um, excuse me, I'm a child psychologist. I followed up with and that. I just <laughs> no, I, totally and I just wanted to, you know, maybe let you know that you should probably look at the full description of the movie before you ki- bring your kids to it. And <laughs> and then I'm like, oh my god, what's gonna happen right now? And I like they're gonna just blow up. But instead, the dad turns to the kid and goes, "Oh, honey, she wants to talk to you." Like they wanted me to give him like, therapy. Right there and like after the, the movie. kid in front, just, and Alicia's like, "Oh no, no!" It's I just okay. wanted to make myself sound legitimate. Yeah, just, yeah. You know, I like, like saying, "Don't don't send your kids to these movies." But That's an really annoying twenty-something-year-old <laughs> would have just been like, you know, annoying oh, wow. and rude, I guess. And yeah. then so. Oh. And they're like, they're like, thank you, thank, thank you. you. I'm like, I'm like, oh my okay. god, that could have gone so differently. <laughs> yeah. Well, they were like well, polite. Wonder, they were polite. I wonder if people even like pay, I see the the screen thing and the the I don't know. Oh man, the screen because thing because there's and the context, video game right? Thing. There's there's context around everything, and 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 sometimes I like to put myself and I see someone doing something, and I'm like, okay, this is the one time this is ever happening. You know, like best case scenario, this is the one time it's happening. That's the one time the parent has responded like that. There's 50 other things that led up to this point in the day mm-hmm. that I didn't see, mm-hmm. so I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. Right. And but sometimes it's just clear that that's not the case. You know, because like, sometimes that happens to us, right? Exactly. Like you, you know, exactly. that like people are judging me right now, yeah. but they have no idea what the last hour has been like. You know, like, like <laughs> stop it out. <laughs> I mean, I mean, <laughs> ah. <laughs> I don't yeah. touch my kids. Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Yeah. there was one time we were in uh, Le Boulanger over the hill, and there was like a twelve-year-old girl on an iPad while the food was there in front of her, like this, and the mom was just like spoon, spoon feeding, feeding her, her as <laughs> so she, she was could eating, like play her as iPad. she was playing her iPad. I would. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and, like Ben was maybe what ten at the time, and he was like so traumatized for life, like he won't even get on an iPad or phone <laughs> in public anyways because he doesn't want anyone to think that about him like he's oh, so, that's cool. so check check this like we did you watch that show on Netflix is was it life is that what it is mm. it's like the beginning of life anyway it's like a it's series like, it's, it's like just, okay 10 episodes and it's all the different stages of kids growing up and these these specialists in the field talking about it neuroscientists yeah, and all this kind of it's, it's really cool and they also talk to families normal families who are going through it mm-hmm. pre-pregnancy during mm-hmm. like just having a kid and, but one of the things they're saying is like they, the whole psychology around kids or everything, the thought process around kids' development between the ages of zero and three was initially like they're complete blank slate. They know nothing. They're not taking any information in. Nothing's retained, blah, blah, blah. And like in the 80s and stuff. In the like, 80s. Like, and then like, in the last 30 years, it's come like, like full that. circle to be like that is the most malleable time in their entire right. lives. Like they're getting more development in those three years than they get for the rest of their lives. Like they, lo- they know a lot more than we think that they know. Right. right. Even as like a just out of the womb – child like can just hear its mom's voice like it's it they just can't interact and it's it's fascinating and then i to me like when i see little like sub three or sub five kids with constant electronics it's like that is the only thing that's stimulating their brain like that's the thing that they're I'm going I'm wondering well, what this generation can compete with that either. No, right, right. It's it's so so stimulating and intentionally so. Like that's what right. they're trying to sell. Right. It's like what what are we gonna what are those kids gonna be later in life? Like are they like uh, I have no idea. I have It'll no idea. To There's see. people I mean, in our family, know. my extended family, who are like so proud of their four year old being so good at some particular video game. Like yeah. that well, is like, I think it's just like think a it's the way totally. They're it's, knowing. Like, it's almost like a right, culture, yeah. you know, like it's just, but they can like, learn. See, the, to me, it's like, you can learn that you can, 
Like, I'm good at video games. I learned that much later in life. Like, right. let my brain develop around human interaction. Let my right. brain develop around throwing knives and being in the dirt and, like, the, the things that humans have done for the last I mean, even millennia. outfits, like, they're allowed to watch TV on the weekends. I mean, this is a special right. occasion, but... And even then, like, Arrow never used to like TV, but because Oaks likes TV and we do let them watch it on the weekends, he likes... We're just like randomly like TV, TV. Like if he's kind of bored or you can see he's like walking around, we're like, what the? <laughs> like you know it's time to like maybe chill out on the TV a little bit. And the two-year-old is like, TV? Should we watch TV? And we're like, no. <laughs> Zero to TV. Zero TV. Anyone? Anyone? Yeah. <laughs> like, we have the same rules. Use it as a tool. Use it yeah. as like a tool in very specific instances. Mm -hmm. And like as like a little bit of enjoyment, you know? But not as like well, a because I enjoy it, you of know. Course. And totally. it's sometimes fun to snuggle on the couch and have a family movie night. Yes, totally. It's all watching um, TV. Yeah, but and I, don't I love movies, it. and I'm like super That's excited about like yeah. showing my boys when they're old enough, like all the rad movies that we yes. had in the 80s well, and 90s. Or just now, you know, like, like showing them now. Not so or just showing them right now because yeah, you don't hot. care. Right? Just <laughs> just <laughs> uh, have we started the Lord of the Rings series? No. Um. So. The uh, so we're gonna we'll, we'll wrap it up. So don't want to hold you all night. It's been awesome. I've but, literally hey. sat here eating this whole thing, <laughs> and I just realized yeah. that this whole thing is on film. <laughs> and I'm just like the pregnant lady sitting here eating. <laughs> well, I have no excuse. So <laughs> uh, you're sitting next to a pregnant lady. So oh, yeah. cool. uh, you're across from. Yeah. yeah. Um. So our final question that we usually ask is just kind of if you go back right before you had kids, you're pregnant with your first, you're about to have. Him and Sam? Ben. 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 Do you have a Sam? No. Oh, Ben, Sam. Oh, sorry. Actually, we were thinking of naming Nolan. See? I knew that. Sam. Uh, <laughs> Get out of my brain. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> do it again. Uh, if, if you were going to go back in time and tell yourself one thing right then as you're about to have a kid, what do you say to yourself? So give um, yourself one piece of advice when you're pregnant. It doesn't need to be so good advice. Just what do you say to yourself? Good job. And I think it's a lesson I still need to learn would be like just not letting uh, fear get in the way of parenting and relationships with, you know, the relationship with them. Because I think sometimes I just let the fear of what other people might think or, you know, I jump forward to like translating into like, what if they're like that when they're an adult and they're going to be a complete Oh, man, we do asshole. that all the time. And like I let that kind of – uh that was, know, that was actually you like, our, <laughs> yeah. part of our toughest yeah. time parenting. Like yeah. our, you know, like one in three year olds phase. Oh, man. Like yeah. Nolan has had a way with words since a very, very young age. And he's a very good zinger inflictor. We call him very, a zinger inflictor. Very young age as well. Like, yeah. So he would just say things that like a three year old shouldn't know. Yeah. You know? Like he watches Little Bear, like, and he's coming up. He'd be like, works. I'm going to poop on you and then oh, yeah. cut off your head. You know, yeah. Like, oh like, yeah. How does he know, know. that that's yeah. like the worst first thing you can like, do to a person? Is he gonna grow up? And... <laughs> yeah. This is exactly. This. I'm gonna kill that person. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should stop watching. <laughs> Alicia is like, hey, we're gonna go. Let's let's go pee. I will pee in your eye. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Straight up. <laughs> we're talking about our son. Right now. So she's like, are we raising a serial killer? Yeah. You know, it's, it's pretty it's, funny. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm, are you through it? Is it like... Oh, pretty much. Okay, okay. So we've yeah. got this hope for Oaks. He's not going to turn into... Oh, no. He's a wonderful, okay. wonderful child. Yeah. I mean, he gives me... If I had just had Ben, I would be insufferable and smug and be like, oh, it's just all about consistency, you know? <laughs> yeah, right. It's so right. easy. It's so easy. And then Nolan came along and he was just... Different. He just different. realized, like, they They're come out just, of the womb they, that way. They just are born with different personalities and you can't do really anything about it. And my goal is just to take that personality of that individual and make them the best version of themselves. Right. And not try to change them, because you can't. Mm -hmm. But just try to make them the best version of themselves. Um, so you had the same feeling? What was, no, what, what was, was, no, was your... No, what was yours? Yeah. You go back and tell yourself. Like, it's yeah, I don't have those kind of fears or anything. But I think... No, do I. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would... Mom thing. Maybe be have fewer assumptions around like scheduling and stuff like that because I think what people always tell you is like 
they warn you about sleep deprivation when really that was like not the hardest thing, you know? And like, it was more about your baby is affected in ways that you just can't comprehend as an adult, right? And so like overstimulation, and it's actually true that they need to eat kind of early and go to bed kind of early. And oh, and Alicia would say, well, if they, I, you know, you think, oh, they stay up later, they're just going to sleep in. Well, that's not really the case, you know? And so like kind of these assumptions, like I had to learn along the way, but it would have been cool to like, <laughs> to know like, hey, <laughs> those things are real and, you know, don't fight it. <laughs> don't fight it. <laughs> right. yeah. We're going to be those cool parents who keep our kid up late. Yeah. yeah, and Famous you know, last words. and we're the Friends oldest are. in our not only in our families but in our peer groups. One of the first to have kids, mm -hmm. and so we just like kind of like had to mush through the you know forge our way. What are we doing? Yeah, exactly. And <laughs> and then people times. coming behind you, like we were talking earlier, like you can you can tell people stuff, but you until you like experience right. it, it's just hard to know. Yeah, right. So we're talking about how. Um, when you have one, like when you have your first kid, it's so hard and everything's so hard. And then you have the next one and then one of those kids goes off and you just have one and how easy it is just mm -hmm. to have the one. Yeah. It's like, oh, it's not even like having any kids. Having yeah. just one. Like, yeah. But when you just have the one, it's, it's just so seems, hard. It's just like, it's like I tell people like go thing. places. Yeah. Go places with your one. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, when you have, you know, two close together, it just makes it. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. Good stuff, though. Time. Good time. Good time. <laughs> yep. Thank you, guys. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys, for listening to the show. And if you wouldn't mind heading on over to iTunes, giving us a rating, and also writing maybe a little review, telling people about the show, as well as checking out our sponsors, Perkia Rings, as well as Cat and Cloud Coffee. That's Perkia, P-Y-R-K-I-A. Use the code tribe life for a little discount and if you want to go to cat and cloud coffee that's c-a-t-a-n-d-c-l-o-u-d so cat and cloud coffee and uh put that in the old google machine pull it up and choose anything in their store use code barbershop and you can get 10 percent off anything in the store all right thank you guys have a wonderful day or night wherever you're at right now or morning whatever it may be 